Climate Finance asks the question, how are we going to pay for the global effort needed to address climate change? This video presents an overview of the Green Climate Fund, post-COP21. The UNFCCC has previously created numerous funds to address climate change. These include the LDC Fund, the Adaptation Fund, and the Special Climate Change Fund. While these previous funds are still operational, most attention has now been being given to the Green Climate Fund, established in Cancun 2010. Some basic facts. It is based in Songdo, South Korea. Its board consists of 12 members from developing countries, 12 members from developed countries. Each member has an alternative, leaving us with the 48 members pictured here. The Green Climate Fund promises at least 100 billion US dollars each year from 2020 onwards. The money up until this year has been housed by the interim trustee, the World Bank. The board has promised the fund will be divided. 50% will go to adaptation, and 50% will go to mitigation. In regards to adaptation, the most vulnerable countries' needs will be prioritized. These include the least developed countries, small island developing states, and African states. Bangladesh is one of the most vulnerable countries to climate change. The rest will go to the other developing countries in G77 plus China. So, how do countries receive this fund? Each country has a national designated authority or focal point that mobilizes bilateral and multilateral organizations, government agencies, NGOs, and the private sector to implement projects. These entities are either called national implementing entities if they are regional or national, or multilateral implementing entities if they are international. For these entities to access the fund, they first need to be accredited by the GCF board. Accreditation is based on environmental and social safeguards, fiduciary standards, upholding a gender policy, and analyzing for risk levels. Once approved by the GCF board, they will be able to make proposals and receive money based on the size of their project. The private sector also has its own private sector facility, which allows businesses to access the fund through loans, grants, and concessional finance. This is how the GCF is able to support organizations on the ground. Some organizations that have been accredited are shown here. The European Bank, the World Bank, the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center, UNDP, the Environmental Investment Fund of Namibia. Most institutions that have been accredited so far are multilaterals. And as of November 2015, eight projects have been approved for funding. This is how the Green Climate Fund hopes to reach the most vulnerable to climate change. It is important to remember that these are the people who contributed least to global emissions. So there you go, a basic overview of the Green Climate Fund. However, there are still some several important questions that need to be answered. For instance, who is going to pay for the Green Climate Fund? While countries have promised at least 100 billion US dollars, as of COP21, only 10.2 billion dollars has been raised. Furthermore, post-COP21, developing countries are now encouraged to contribute to the fund, even if they have historically contributed least to climate change. Although the Paris Agreement calls for an even split between adaptation and mitigation finance, there is no guarantee that 50% of funds will actually head towards adaptation. Does the GCF give out grants or loans? The most vulnerable countries believe that they should be grants, since they also contributed least to anthropogenic climate change. How will we keep NIEs and MIEs accountable? And what about when adaptation is not possible? Loss and damage is a topic currently being discussed and will hopefully have its own financial mechanism in the future. So there you go, a brief overview of the Green Climate Fund and the state of climate finance post-Paris.